All right, here I am back with you, Michael Pearl at the door. This is uh, put out with No Greater Joy Ministries. You've been sending in your questions. And uh, I have one here said, I just listened to Mike's teaching on Revelation 4 and was surprised to hear him teaching numerology. Is that what I was teaching? If someone was reading the Bible in Russian, would they come to the same conclusions that Mike's comes to using the KJV? God's Word is not a mystery to be deciphered using word counts and numbers. It is the plain truth. Jonathan, I agree with you absolutely. The Bible is not a word count book that is designed to be understood through counting words or numbers. Absolutely. I've never taught otherwise. All I've said was that just as Christians from the earliest Tertullian, the earliest uh, church fathers down to the present, have all observed without intending to, without setting out to do so, have observed that the Bible uses numbers with unique symbolism. Uh, every preacher you hear points that out. Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Moses up on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. 40 is the number of testing. You hear every preacher say that. You're not teaching something through numbers when you take a note that that's the way the Bible uses it. You've heard that number six is the number of man. Now, there's good reason why we would say that because in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 8, he says, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number. Uh-oh, Jonathan. John said that. He didn't know he wasn't supposed to count the number. <laughs> count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Six is the number of man. If you read every time the number six appears in the Bible and things that appear in groups of six, you find that it is a number that deals with man. Can't help that fact. You say, would that happen in Russian? Yes, it would. In Russian, you would find in the context where six appears, you'd find it the same. Now, counting the number of times a word appears in a paragraph, a sentence, or a book, or the whole Bible probably wouldn't be the same in Russian and certainly wouldn't be the same in other English Bibles. I find as much as a 10 or 15% difference, sometimes 100% difference in some of your modern Bibles. Uh, so I'm, I do not speak Russian, so I really can't say what they can do there, but that's not going to, that's not going to prevent me from appreciating what God has given us in the King James Bible. Uh, so we're counting the numbers. Now, uh, when I was studying the book of Revelation uh, back several years ago, I, uh, I looked up, I took, the, I took a copy from Sword Searcher and, and Logos Libronics of the book of Revelation. I put it into my Word document, and I counted the number of words, and I came out with 11,995. Five short of 12,000. Now, I know that the number 12,000 stands for wars, nations at war. It's used that way throughout the Bible. And that's the context in which you find it. And, of course, the book of Revelation is about nations at war. There's no, no, no bigger subject in the book of Revelation than nations at war. So I knew that there was 12,000 words that my computer was not correct. So I used several different uh, computers, several different Bible sources, and kept coming up with 12, 5, 11,995. So I, I got a photostat copy of the original 1611 first edition King James Bible. And I counted e each paragraph and noted the number of times, the number of words. I do that until I got the same count three times straight in a row. And I usually got three times straight in a row right away. But if on the second one I got a different count, then I did three more times till it got consistent. And then I totaled up the number on the page. And then I did each page. I had, a, had it printed out like this. So I came up <laughs> with exactly 12,000 words, number of war nations in the book of Revelation and the 1611 first edition hot off the press Bible. So that left me with a curiosity. Are five words missing out of my Libronics uh, 
King James Bible. So I laid the two side by side, and I counted each verse, and I found the five difference, five differences. And you know what they were? It's more complex than this, but to make it short, the word first fruits, first begotten, like that had been run together in our modern text. So first fruits, two words in the original. First fruits, one word in the present, the way the computer reads it. So there's exactly 12,000 words. Not only that, <laughs> I won't go into it here. I've done it other places. But in the next edition, there was 12,000. In all five editions of the King James Bible, there's been exactly 12,000 words in every one of them. And the same 12,000 words are present in the King James Bible today. Exactly same order, same words. So, <laughs> what does that say? Is that true in Russian? I don't know. I can't read Russian, but I, I can't help noting it. So what I did then is I counted every time a word was used. I, I listed every word in the book of Revelation. I got along several pages of every time any word is found. And then I looked up every time that word is used and made a note of the number of times. And then I went through the whole Bible and found the same word, how many times it's used through the whole Bible. I've got pages after pages of charts and diagrams and tables expressing this. And what I was amazed to find out was the book of Revelation, every time it uses a number or something appears a certain number of times, it uses the number consistent with the meaning of the context. Now, I didn't learn anything about the book of Revelation. All I learned was that God's thumbprint was on it. When he does something, he leaves a, a thumbprint on it. And that's what he did in that case. All right? Now, uh, I'm going to quickly, for those of you that... I, by the way, I've got a video series on this, uh, Numbers in the Bible. It's long and it's boring, <laughs> but it's, it's all there. I go through every number in the Bible and uh, read most of the verses... And uh, so, I mean, I like take a whole hour to go over one number and go all through the Bible on it so you can look at that numbers in the Bible. Huh? It's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Free. My, my wife out there, she's waving at me and telling me it's on YouTube. She, she keeps up with me. Okay, one speaks of that which is unique. Two is the number of division. Three is the number of divine control, election, and sovereignty. Four is the number of structural or created wholeness. God creates it, ordains it, man makes it. Five is the number of divine appointment. Six is the number of man. Seven represents that which is complete in regard to the program of God. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Nine represents finality, the termination of something that results in fulfillment. Ten is symbolically used to represent the whole, the full amount. Eleven speaks of dissolution, incompleteness. Just get your King James Bible and look up 11 and read every time 11 is used. You'll be a numbers believer. 12 but, for, uh, 12, uh, but for a few exceptions, all of them stand for headship or government. 13, well known to be the number of sin, death, and judgment. 14, the number that expresses divine guidance and blessing. 15, expresses a very positive event for God's people. 16, the number of reigning, ruling, or governing. 17 is an omen of evil things coming. Negative in every context, every single context, 17, negative. 18 is the number of oppression or judgment in all 23 times it appears. It's the number of oppression or judgment. Now, why, why shouldn't I recognize that? After, after you read your Bible a whole lot, and which I've read it a whole lot, and you see there's 18, you know, wow, okay, something bad here. Oppression or judgment, yep, sure enough. That's the context. So should I not note that, that God just kind of, you know, on the side, he just uses numbers that way? 19 is the number of destruction. 20 is the number of maturity. 30 and 8 is used only twice. Now, I'm not giving you all of them I've covered. I've covered them all, but just uh, skipping here. 40 is the number of t testing. 666 is disobedience. Tenth part speaks of that portion that's reserved for God in all cases. 10,000 represents the entire sum and speaks of, metaphorically, of an infinite large number. 70 is the number of God's appointment to rule or to hold office or to be an authority. And uh, then numbers like uh, 42 is uh, terminal judgment. 
50 is a full unit. 70 is God's, I uh, got that one. 120 is sacred. 300 is war. 7,000 is remnant. 12,000, I got that nation is war. Tenth part is that which is separated from the whole to be dedicated to God. Fourth part, God ordained sacrifice. Third part, sacrifice and judgment. Half, that's two parts divided. Fifth part is uh, assessed and given an obligation to meet one's responsibility. All you have to do is get your Bible and look those up, and you'll see that. And I'm give you something right interesting here. Not only does the Bible use numbers in a unique way, but history numbers repeat themselves in a unique way. Bible history, God's history, repeats itself. For instance, uh, remember nine is the number of um, termination. Uh, just think about mathematically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, what's next? Zero. It, nine is all the numbers. You go back and you take a one, you put a zero with it, and you go, you go to the next. Uh, so it is the number of termination, fulfillment. And the ninth day of the second month and the last day of grace before Noah's, when the animals were put on the ark and the door was shut. So it was the ninth day. The Jews observed the ninth of Tisha B'Av by reading the book of Lamentations. They do it to this day. Contemplating the ashes upon which the new world will rise. It's a time of fasting, sitting on the floor, and singing dirges. It's a time of making themselves sad and miserable. Ninth, uh, historically, the destruction of the first temple was on the ninth of Tisha B'Av, and amazingly, Many, many years later, the second temple was destroyed on the exact same day of the year, the ninth of Tishu, the Av. Uh, on the ninth, they sent out 10 spies and returned with a re bad report, which resulted in 40 years of testing and wandering in the wilderness. So ninth is termination of fulfillment. Now, the, Simon bar Kochba led a Jewish revolt against Rome on the 9th of Av. His army was totally wiped out, so it was termination. He made a mistake. On the 9th of Av, 1290 AD, a declaration was made that Jews would be expelled from England. Sad time for England and for the Jews. 9th of Av, the deadline for all Jews to be out of Spain in 1492, the same day Columbus received money for his trip to the New World. 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And what did they do? They drove all the Jews out of the land the same day. Ninth of Av, World War I broke out and Russia began its persecution of Jews. World War I broke out on that day. Isn't it interesting how God's sovereign, he's in control. He makes things happen, leaves his mark on it. Of A.D. 71, the Romans plowed Jerusalem, ninth of all, uh, as Micah had predicted in 312. So the Romans plowed, it was prophesied, they would plow it up, and they did. Both Jewish temples are destroyed on the same day, 600 years apart on the ninth of all. Now, when you read the uh, Noah's account, for instance, there's so many numbers in Noah's account. Uh, 17 is, a, we, when I went through it a while ago, is an omen of something evil coming. It's negative in every single context. All right? On the seventh day, th 17th day of the second month, Noah's 600th year was the first day of the flood. <laughs> what could be more evil than that? The whole world, with except eight souls, died on that 17th. Uh, the entire flood period, including loading the animals, was 12 months and 17 days. Tammuz, the 17th, which is the fourth month, the major theme is displeasure for the Jews. Moses, upon seeing the idolatry of the Jews, broke the tablets containing the Ten Commandments on the 17th of Tammuz. The 12 spies uh, sent out on the 17th and returned on the 9th of Av with a bad report. There's your numbers together. 
and resulted in 40 years wandering. 587 B.C. on the 17th of Tammuz, the Babylonians broke down the walls of Jerusalem, stopped the daily sacrifices for the first time in 400 years. 21 days later, on the 9th of Av, they destroyed the temple. Now, if God in history uses numbers in such a repetitive fashion and they always carry the same meaning, why would I ignore them? Well, now if I had a New International Version, I probably would because they would foul it all up. But having a King James Bible, I can't help but see them. All right, on the 17th of Tammuz in 70 AD, the Romans catapulted stones into the rebuilt temple, killing many priests and stopping sacrifices. 21 days later, they destroyed the temple and burned it. So that concludes uh, the numbers. That's why I mention numbers when I'm teaching the Bible is because they're there and he did say count the numbers. So we do, we count the numbers. I'm Michael Pearl at the door.